And many people go through life never getting in touch with their greatness because of the lack of motivation to push themselves or because they have not found something that they believe to be worthwhile to challenge them. That many a talented persons have gone unnoticed and the world never had a chance to be exposed to their talent because that person did not take the time to begin to express or to demonstrate or to motivate themselves in the direction to bring that which they came into the universe to bring. Many people will leave the universe without a trace. No one will know they were here. And in fact, under their name, we could put under there, not used up. Will anybody know that you came this way? What contribution are you giving? What will you leave? What will be different because you came this way? That life is our gift to us that God has given us and how we live our lives is our gift to God. What kind of gift are you formulating? Is this a gift that you like to take back and do something else before you turn it in? Think about that. What can we do? What are some of the keys that we can begin to use to motivate ourselves when our batteries run low? Because I don't care who you are, I don't care what you do, at some time you are going to get tired. At some time you're going to get in a rut, seem like nothing you do works out right. At some times it just seems like you just don't have the wherewithal or the will to do anything. That sometimes you act like you're punch drunk, you're just wading through life, just doing time, day in and day out, looking at non-discriminatory television, anything that's on, just looking and depressed feeling powerless, feeling useless, and bored. What do you do? How do you get yourself out of a rut? How do you, when you know you can do more than what you've been doing, and you're not doing it, and you're discontent with where you are, you get angry at yourself. How do you get out of that rut? How do you motivate yourself? One of the things that we must do is that we must be involved in working on achieving self-mastery. You must work on yourself continuously. Never be satisfied with yourself. Always know that as you invest the effort and time on you, that's the greatest ability that human beings have above animals. See, a dog can't be anything but a dog. A tree can't be anything but a tree. Human being, you've got unlimited potential. You can put effort on you, and by concentrating on you and developing you, you can transform your life wherever you are right now. So you want to work on yourself. You want to read books that inspire you and motivate you. You want to listen to tapes over and over and over again. And I suggest that you listen to tapes when you first get up in the morning. You want to control the spirit of your day. When you first wake up in the morning, your mind is operating at 10.5 wave cycles per second. That's when the subconscious mind is most impressionable. Whatever you hear in the first 20 minutes when you wake up, that will affect the spirit of your day. When you listen to tapes, listen with relaxed belief. Believing that this can happen for you. And by listening to them, listen to them over and over and over again. And you will get a breakthrough. You can listen to the same tape for months and all of a sudden you hear something you never heard before. It have a special meaning for you. Or read the same book over again and you find some special insight. You said, I can't believe I didn't see that the first time. So you want to be involved in developing yourself. Most people won't do that. Most people won't take that kind of effort and invest that kind of energy in themselves because they will fall prey to that conversation within. Oh, don't do that. You don't have time. You're too busy. You're too caught up in the rat race. Most people won't do that. Well, they won't take time to go to lectures. They won't take time to go to seminars. They won't take time to, to go to classes to improve themselves. And as you continue to work on yourself, you will begin to expand your vision of yourself. You begin to work towards self-mastery and you will begin to see it reflect itself in all the dimensions of your life, your mental life, your physical life, your social life, in your relationships, your monetary life. So concentrate on developing yourself because if you don't, I guarantee you that you will make a settlement and most people have and most of us already have. What kind of settlement have you made with your life? Many of us are making in-life settlement. We're settling for less than what we actually deserve. We don't feel good about it, but we make it work in our minds. 
will come up with some kind of excuse to make it all right. What kind of settlement have you made with your life? Many of us settle for less than what we want out of relationships because we don't have the courage to change them. The next thing is, in order to begin to find some keys to self-motivation to drive yourself, in addition to working on yourself, and as you work on yourself, you feel good about yourself, and as you feel better about yourself, you treat yourself differently, develop a health plan. See, you can't feel well and do well if you don't have good health. You can't perform if you don't have your health. Your health is valuable. Develop a health plan. A plan that you will follow because this is the only vehicle that you have to carry you through this experience called life. And you want to take good care of it because you love you enough. You care enough about you. And that's not easy. It is not easy having a health plan and sticking to it. But you're worth it doing it again and again and again. Next thing is as you take care of yourself, the next key is keys to motivation, to self-motivation. You want to live life with energy and passion. You want to make a conscious effort to be lively. See, in life, you either saying hello or goodbye. You either on the way or in the way. You want to be happy. You got a lot to be thankful for. But you watch some of the faces around you every day. And I tell you, some of these faces, they will put you in a depressed state of mind. So you want to avoid these kind of faces. When you see them coming, turn your head. The things that you say to yourself, you want to watch them. And in watching them, you want to take charge. So you've got to learn to stand up to yourself inside yourself. And short circuit, override that conversation that's always going on. 85% of what that conversation will tell you is negative. It's negative. It will tell you you're tired when you really are not tired. It will tell you you can't do it. It will fill you with fear. So you've got to watch that conversation. And when you find it going on, you've got to stand up to it and say, I'm going to do this anyhow. I'm afraid, but I'm afraid not to do it. And I'm not going to let you stop me. The biggest challenge that you will have in life is you. There's an old African proverb that says, if there's no enemy within, the enemy outside can do us no harm. The next thing that is a key to self-motivation is that you've got to ask yourself what do I want out of life what do you want out of life what do you want out of a job what do you want out of a career what do you want out of a relationship what do you want what gives you your life what how will you know when you got it what will make you happy you need to know you need to start asking yourself some questions what do I really really truly want you need to be exact about that. Don't be vague. Oh, I just want to be happy. That's too vague. What will make you happy? How will you know when you got it? Zero in on it. Be exact. Be specific. And as you do that, that will stimulate that superconscious mind or the reticular activating system of your mind that will begin to find those things, to identify with it. And once you begin to determine that which you want, take the time to write it down. Don't just think about it. Write it down. That is a subjective process that engages the subconscious mind. Write it down. Once you write it down, read it three times a day. Morning, noon, and night. Why is that important? Because what it will do, it will cause you to focus. It will cause you to concentrate. When that other conversation is going on telling you what you cannot do, telling you all of the impossibilities and all of the obstacles, your concentrating will begin to create a larger vision within yourself and you start looking for and seeing some new opportunities. You start creating some openings for yourself. As you begin to read that every day, every day, day in and day out, that will make you focus. That will discipline your thinking. And you'll get all kind of creative ideas. As I talk to you right now, being involved in this immersion process, you're going to create some openings for yourself. 
You're going to get some ideas. You're going to feel your adrenaline flowing and you're going to think about something, some idea you had. You say, I want to go back and I'm going to look at that again from a different vantage point, not from the level of the problem of the obstacles that I encountered, but from a higher vantage point. Because what you will begin to see and to know as I talk to the higher consciousness within you, that you are powerful, that you are a miracle worker. And that inner conversation has conditioned you to believe that you are not. And as you begin to discover the truth of who you are, whatever challenge that you're facing in life, and if you're living, you're facing some challenge, you'll begin to know that you're powerful and that you're a miracle maker. Let's look at how we can begin to keep our commitments. Remembering what Dr. Robert Anthony said about results. When you keep your commitments, you're able to produce some different kinds of results in your life. So how can we keep our commitments? And do we keep all commitments? No, we don't. You will not be at 100%. However, you will have a greater percentage rate of, of maintaining your commitments to yourself, whatever those things might be. If it's going into business, if it's, if it's changing a habit that you know that works against you, if it's overcoming self-destructive behavior, if it's retraining your thinking, if it's reinventing yourself, if it's trying to begin to design your relationship differently, all of us have the possibility by focusing and really harnessing our attention and concentrating on it, we really have available to us the power to honor our commitments in those particular areas. So number one, make it priority. See, no one would go get on an airplane if you thought your chances of getting there to your destination were as good as your luggage. Am I correct? See, and I say the reason that you will reach your destination more times than your luggage will is because the airline, and I'm glad that they do, has made it a priority to move the human beings from one point to the other safely. Not send you off to Boston or someplace with your luggage. So I'm not really upset when my luggage doesn't show up. I'm glad they delivered me because they've made me a priority. See, they have made delivering you to your destination important. So if you want to honor your commitment, whatever you decide that you're going to do, make sure you make it important. Make sure it is priority. Keep it before you. The other thing is, whatever that you want to do, whatever you want to begin to create and beginning to manifest your greatness and, and strengthening your level of commitment, and it's, it's really exercising your will, Find something that you want to do on your goal, one action step, but make sure it stretches you, that it challenges you, but it's doable, that you can do it. This year I decided that I was going to exercise. So I started out doing just 10 setups and 10 push-ups. I know I can do that and not get upset about it. I can do that without thinking. So I started out small, now I'm up to 50, but if I try to do 50 starting out, I wouldn't still be doing it. So I started doing it in, in manageable segments. Do that. And that, that strengthens your will. So my commitment now is strengthened and fortified by the activity of actually doing it. So now I can expand and build from there. When I decided to begin to manage my money differently, and I started saving 5% of my money, then I increased it to 10% then to 15%. So now I have disciplined myself to live off 75% of my income. I took discipline to do that, but I started watching how I was spending my money. I started keeping a log and following myself. So you want to begin to find something that is manageable, that you know that you can do. The next thing in beginning to, to keep your commitments to yourself have some friends that will hold you accountable, that won't let you off the hook, that won't tolerate anything less than the best from you. People that will support you in this new way of being, in this new state of consciousness. The other thing is important is have a contingency plan. See, many times when you make a commitment to do something, there are some other variables that will happen that you can't control or you perhaps did not think about. 
So you want to have some other plans going on. You want to become creative. See, most people don't keep their commitments because when something goes wrong, they just stop. They don't have a contingency plan. So they don't know what to do next. Start being creative. If you challenge yourself, many times they say, I don't know what to do. And I always ask myself, but if you did know what to do less, what will it be? That activates another part of my mind. I start thinking about the possibilities and just experimenting. But many, many of us just stop dead in our tracks. I don't know what to do. You do know what to do. You've got genius in you. Challenge yourself, push yourself, make yourself come up with something. Use your imagination. And what you will find is that you know more than you realize that you know. That you're more creative and more resourceful than you realize that you are. And as you do that, the more you do it, the easier it will become. At first, it's going to be a struggle. And after you get into a certain level of consciousness, you will ask yourself, I, how is it that I didn't see this before? At the level that I'm managing my business now, they say consciousness is what we are. I literally look at myself and say, how is it that I didn't do this before? Why is it that I couldn't see this before? And the reason that I didn't see it before, because I didn't challenge myself. I didn't put myself out here. See, the reason that most of us go through life never discovering our true greatness, literally walking, breathing corpses, the uncommitted life isn't worth living. Why? Because it doesn't produce anything. See, you only make things happen, your life only counts, you only make a difference when you are committed. When you make a commitment with your life, that's the people that make a commitment with their lives, the people that make a commitment to their customers, the people that make a commitment to their families, to their relationships, are the people that make the greatest impact in life. What is commitment? Commitment is the salesman who says, look here, I'm going to make a thousand dollars today and I'm not going home. You can turn the lights out. The janitors could be here running the vacuum cleaner. I'm not leaving here till I do it. I used to be a door-to-door -door salesman. I had X number of TVs. I had a minimum amount that I knew I had to sell every day in order to provide for my mother who was ill at the time, who had lost her job at the M&M cafeteria because of arthritis. And I said, I'm going to go door to door and sometimes I would not come home until one o'clock at night knocking on people door people closing what do you want would you like to buy a nice working months television set no money down no what about an Emerson TV no thank you very much do you know anybody else that would be interested no thank you very kindly knock on another hello would you like to buy a nice working television set no money down no get away from our door thank you very kindly do you know anybody else would be yeah, my cousin, he lives two doors down. Thank you very kindly. I tell him you sent me. When I hey, your cousin told me that you wanted to buy a television set, told me to come here and talk to you. We got a special discount for you. Yes, come in. I'm interested. I would just keep right on. I would not go home until I did it. It's an interesting thing, ladies and gentlemen, that when we put ourselves in a situation where we say we're going to do it, it, it puts you in another zone where the universe responds to you when you have that kind of consciousness see the universe responds to the man or woman that refuses to be denied because that is your commitment that business that you want that book you want to write that dream that you have of controlling your destiny that is yours that power to create that and to manifest that that is yours that's available to you but you've got to be willing to stand there and face disappointment not have support be lonely doubt yourself sometimes be rejected again and again and again become bankrupt if necessary again and again and again and refuse to turn around until life gives it up nothing can resist a person that has that kind of commitment the people that have made a difference on the planet. When a John F. Kennedy said, we will go to the moon in the next decade, he spoke it. That was a commitment and people shared that vision. People bought into that. We've had all kinds of examples in history where people have made declarations, who have committed their lives to bring about a difference. There are people who are taking a stand today against hunger. I guarantee you it will be a part of our past at some point in time. Someone took a stand against polio. It no longer plagues us as it once did. Because someone said, it is my commitment to eradicate it from the face of the earth. Someone made the commitment. The reason that we're here and enjoying the democracy that we have. Someone made a commitment that whatever is required, 
If it means that I die, I remember Paul Robeson, here I stand for, I can do no other. And that's how you must be. Commitment means standing up for your life. It means honoring yourself. It means, it means beginning to say and to, to see and recognize your alignment and oneness with the universe. And that you are a channel for life to express through. And we short circuit it with anger. We short circuit it with fear. We short circuit it with, with envy. We short circuit it by being lazy or apathetic or giving up easily. Why, why, why? We say, oh, it's too hard, it's too hard. We don't challenge our spirit. Ladies and gentlemen, there's nothing as powerful as the human spirit. You can't destroy it. You can pervert it, but you can't destroy it. I was reading Man's Search for Meaning by Victor Frankl. What a powerful book. I'm reading it now for the seventh time. And he gives so many graphic examples of, of the power of the human spirit. And so what are some of the things that can, can fortify us and, and give us the kind of inner strength that will allow us to forward ourselves into the future by manifesting our commitments? Number one, commitment means in some cases going back to school, getting some training, sitting up in classes with people younger than you, putting yourself in a position where you don't know and that is awkward and uncomfortable but because of your commitment to develop yourself or to go back to school to get a high school diploma or to get a college degree that it doesn't matter feeling dumb and saying what am I doing here setting up in some boring class commitment can mean a lot of things it could mean that you begin to go back you gotta back up sometimes it means to back up and not give up to regroup back up and regroup and come back again because life has waylaid you, because you got knocked down. I know when, when I was working on my dream, there were times I, I lost my house at one point. I lost my car. I was broke. My credit was bad. I was sleeping at different friends' houses on their couch or on the floor. There were times, months, that I slept on the floor of my office and got up early and dressed before my staff got there to give them the impression that I got there early before they did. <laughs> and we all pretend not to know what we knew that the boss was staying in the office. <laughs> so we never talked about it. But I refuse, I refuse to give up on my dream. And what happens, they say, you know, in the prosperous years, you put it in your pocket. In the lean years, you put it in your heart. It makes me appreciate it even more. Even more. I, I wouldn't trade it. I wouldn't trade it for anything. The disappointment, the pain that I've gone through by keeping the commitment. Keeping the commitments that you have might mean taking a stand that's, that's unpopular. Something was said one time. When you take a position, says cowardice asks the question, is it safe? Politics asks the question, is it popular? But conscience or commitment asks the question, is it right? And see, most people rather operate from the first two. Is it safe for me to take this position? I remember when I was a state legislator, I saw guys and, and, and women who believe in legislation very strongly but because the speaker of the house said we won't go with that they backed down and they felt bad about it they wouldn't take the position because they didn't want the speaker of the house to be angry at them they wanted to be all right with all of the rest of our colleagues see it takes a great deal of strong courage and commitment on your part to step out a line to, you know Henry David Thoreau says if a man doesn't keep pace with his companions perhaps he's listening to the beat of a different drama let him dance to the music that he hears however measured or far apart when you are committed you're dancing to the beat of a different drama don't expect people to understand you don't expect it to make sense to anybody why you've got to do this why you have got to go why you leave this is a good job I'm going they pay you well I'm going you just a few years from retirement I'm going why I don't understand you don't have to work here's what I suggest number one that does happen so take total responsibility for it just own it don't make any excuses on why you gave in 
or why you didn't come through. Just own it and face the flack, whatever it is. Stand up inside yourself. Next thing is, assess the situation. How did you get here? What happened that you broke down, that you had a breakdown and you surrendered? What happened? What was going on? See, when I used to go on a diet, and I no longer do that, I've made a commitment to a healthy lifestyle. I used to eat up until 12 midnight on Sunday. Anything that wasn't moving. <laughs> and on Monday, I would, I would get up and, and, and um, eat a fruit, get a light fruit breakfast, and for lunchtime, I would um, fix some broiled chicken and meticulously peel the skin off and eat the chicken and then eat the skin. <laughs> Do five setups, look in the mirror and become discouraged because my stomach doesn't look like a washboard or one of the Avon Haley dances. And I say, what the use? And then I go to the refrigerator and eat food cold standing right there in the refrigerator. So when I evaluated where I broke down, I realized I can't have junk food in the house. So I changed my route. I stopped taking people to lunch or to dinner because I couldn't sit there and watch them eat. When I had to go someplace and speak and they were eating, I said, call me downstairs when it's time for me to speak. Because if I sit at the table looking at them, the food's going to call my name. And I know this. So I had to begin to make sure that I wasn't putting myself in a position where I would give up on my commitment. Am I making sense to you? So I began to strategize around avoiding situations where I knew that I was going to become weak. Another thing I do when I don't keep my commitment, I either deny myself something or I do a trade-off. If a glazed donut takes advantage of me, then I require myself to do an extra 25 setups, or I walk for an extra 15 or 20 minutes because it got a hammerlock on my head and say, come on over here. So you might have to deny yourself something or do a trade-off. Do something that will offset it. The other thing is, start again. So what? You fell flat on your face. So what? Start again. Learn from the experience and start again. Don't count yourself out. Don't sentence yourself to a lifetime of being miserable, a lifetime of being broke, a lifetime of being unhealthy, a lifetime of being in a relationship that is no longer fulfilling to you, a lifetime of, live, of working on a job that, that does not bring you satisfaction, that's not giving you the creative uh, urge that you need and, and, and that got to have in your life that stimulates you. Don't sentence yourself like that. You are a human being. Don't volunteer your life that way. Your life has too much value to the universe. You've got something to contribute. You've got something to give. And so what if you make a commitment and you're not able to do it like a pro? That you're not good as everybody else. Live in the moment. I like what this says. Look to this day for it is life. The very life of life. In its brief course lie all the realities and verities of existence, the bliss of growth, the splendor of action, the glory of power. For yesterday is but a dream and tomorrow is only a vision. But today, today well lived makes every yesterday a dream of happiness and every tomorrow a vision of hope. Look well therefore to this day. See, if we just start enjoying where we are, if we make that kind of commitment, to enjoy where we are, to experience the experience of life where we are, to do all we can right now where we are. Forget about the mistakes yesterday. Forget about all your failures yesterday. Forget, forget about what you don't have. That's not important. Only thing that we have is right now, right now, right now. And I say that life is calling on you to call forth on that. The optimists, which I think one of the most positive groups in, in the world, they have something called the optimist creed and I like it says promise yourself I changed it to commit yourself because I think that commitment has more power than promise it says commit yourself to be so strong that nothing can disturb your peace of mind to talk health happiness and prosperity to every person you meet to make all your friends feel that there is something in them to look at the sunny side of everything and make your optimism come true to think only of the best, to work only for the best, and expect only the best. 
to be just as enthusiastic about the success of others as you are about your own. To forget the mistakes of the past and press on to the greater achievements of the future. To wear cheerful continents at all times and give every living creature you meet a smile. To give so much time to the improvement of yourself that you have no time to criticize others. To be too large for worry, too noble for anger, too strong for fear, and too happy to permit the presence of trouble. Commit yourself to these things. Isn't that powerful? What a commitment to make with your life. Commit yourself to stretch, to get outside of your comfort zone, and not be concerned about what people think about you because they're thinking it anyhow. <laughs> Don't worry about what they will say. They're already saying it. So what do you care? Decide that, that your life has so much meaning to the planet. Decide that you have something to give. That's why you're here. So you didn't just show up. You brought something here. You're on a journey, you have a destination, mission to achieve, to do, to implement, to perform, to experience. Decide to commit yourself to be an adventurer in life. Look out on life around you. Look within yourself and say, where is it in my life that I need to make a commitment right now? Where is it that it might be for your health, it might be to be a happier person? It might be to make a difference in your community. It might be that. Where is it? I say that commitment shows up and the man or woman who has some idea, some, some dream that they've been nurturing within themselves and no one believed it, no one saw it for them. That they weren't masters at it, they weren't experts at it, no one would build a statue and ever call their name and recognize them. They never made it to the front page of the newspaper, but they had something that was theirs, something that, that was their baby, something that they loved and, and they believed in, and they just did what they could with what God gave them with their dream. Commitment shows up, and people that are willing to give themselves a chance, who look at their lives look within themselves and say, I know, I know that, that this just cannot be it for my life. I know that there's, there's something I'm supposed to do. I don't know right now. Or maybe you do know. Maybe you do know and you've talked yourself out of it. And I understand that. Because I, I I'm, I'm late. I've, no, no, no. Everything happens as it should. I, I got the courage to step out, to, to become committed. I was... I was seriously not serious before and, and I decided it took me some time to build up the courage to become committed because it frightened me so I understand wrestling with it. I wish I can tell you I've been doing this for 20 years. I haven't, I haven't, I haven't. I'm just glad that that I decided to become committed before I left here. And wherever you are, decide that you're going to commit your life now. And let it show up in your contribution. Let it show up in what you have to share. And whatever commitment that you make, honor your commitment as yourself. Honor your word as yourself. Whatever you put out there, do it with what you've got. I want to thank you very much for your consciousness. This is Mrs. Mamie Brown's baby boy, Leslie Calvin Brown, saying it's been a plum-pleasing pleasure as well as a privilege. Thank you all. Yeah.